Yo, what's up everyone? Baitor here with a new interview question for you. First, I would like to thank all of you for engaging with our content and subscribing to our channel. We've got plenty of positive feedback on our comment section and through email. In fact, several of you requested that our next question includes op amps and capacitors. So this next question that was already teased on LinkedIn is the response to your requests. This particular question comes from a real life interview for a hardware engineering position in touch sensing screens. You know touch sensing screens, they are practically everywhere, from your phones to your tablets and even your laptops. This position will require you to know a little bit of digital and analog. However, this question will only focus on the analog portion by request. Here's some bonus content for you. The interviewer will definitely ask you something along the lines of, how do you think touch sensing screens work? If you are completely lost, that is okay. The interviewer may guide you and tell you to assume that all touch sensing screens are capacitive. And will ask you again, if the touch sensing screens are capacitive, how do you think they would work? You do not have to know anything about touch sensing screens to be able to answer this question. The only thing you need to know are how capacitive dividers and slash or RC circuits work. But notice how the interviewer doesn't ask you about capacitive dividers or RC circuits directly, but instead gives you an open-ended question to see if you can fill the gaps with your current knowledge. That's what interviewing is all about. There will be no answer for this bonus content, but feel free to leave a comment with what you think the right answer is. Spoilers, there is more than one right answer. All right, so let's get into our question for today. After answering some high-level questions, the interviewer will show you the following circuit and ask you the following. Can you derive the transfer function for the circuit? Now, this is of course the easy part and is only asked to make you feel comfortable in the setting and with the circuit. Some interviewers might even completely skip the transfer function question and ask you what kind of filter this is. Now here's some advice for you. If you are a recent college grad or even somebody with two or three years of experience and you are asked what kind of filter this is for any circuit, I don't care what circuit it is for any circuit, please do not answer it from memory. That's a recipe for failure. Instead, say something along the lines of, you know, I don't like to memorize circuits, so let me derive the transfer function and based on that, I can tell you what kind of filter this is. This will give you major bonus points. Anyway, the transfer function for the circuit applying KCL is negative one over J omega RC. We will not go over how we achieve this transfer function, but make sure you are very comfortable with how to derive it. Anyway, the interviewer will now say the following. Imagine I hit my circuit with a step response from zero to VCC. What does the voltage at node VX look like? I'll give you about 10 seconds to pause and try to solve the problem by yourself. Notice that the interviewer is not directly asking you what V out looks like, but instead an intermediate node. An intermediate node that is often forgotten about when studying for interviews. Anyway, let's see how we can answer this question. Well, first we have to remind ourselves that the amplifier is ideal. That means infinite gain and infinite bandwidth. Because of this property, we know that both terminals of the amplifier must be equal. That means Vx equals zero. Since both terminals are equal, the amplifier is operating correctly and Vout must also be equal to zero. So let's start sketching. Then, once the input response hits, the amplifier, due to its ideal characteristics, will try to maintain both terminals of the amplifier equal. The only thing that can change at this moment is the Vout. Because of the inverting configuration, Vout will start to drop from zero to negative VCC, while Vx remains constant at zero. Once Vout has reached zero, the amplifier has completely railed out and both terminals of the amplifier cannot be held equal anymore. 
At this moment, the current going through R will charge the capacitor until Vx reaches the VCC. And the voltage at Vx will look like an RC response. Just like this. Notice here that we leverage our knowledge of the amplifier, its idealities and how V out will look like to be able to sketch Vx. If you solely focus on Vx without looking at any of the other notes, you will have a very hard time trying to answer this question. Moving on. After sketching all these intermediate notes, the interviewer will likely ask you the following question. How about the current through the capacitor? How does that look like? This can be interpreted as a tricky question because most people get intimidated when looking at the current through capacitors. If you examine this circuit closely enough, you will notice that the current through the capacitor and the current through the resistor are exactly the same. Therefore, if we figure out what the current through the resistor is, we will know what the current through the capacitor looks like. So let's back up a little bit here. Initially, we said that the input voltage is zero. We also concluded that Vx was also zero. That means there is no voltage drop on R and so no current can be flowing through it. Let's sketch that. Then, immediately after the step response, we have a voltage drop across the resistor. That means there is current flowing through this resistor, and this current will immediately jump from zero to VCC minus Vx divided by R. Since we concluded that Vx was initially zero, then the current flowing through the capacitor is simplified to be VCC divided by R. Now let's look at the period where Vout starts dropping and the amplifier has both terminals equal. The current flowing through the capacitor and through the resistor is held constant at VCC over R due to the voltage drop at R. Once the amplifier has railed out, the current through the resistor will start charging the capacitor and raising the voltage at node Vx. And with the rise in Vx, the current through the resistor will decrease. Since we said that the voltage at Vx looks like an RC response, then the current must also look like an RC response, like so. That's all the content we have for you today. Make sure you smash that subscribe and like button if you would like to see more of this content. See you next time.